All right, guys, welcome to our Friday quick live stream. I wanted to hop on and give you guys some content. I thought it'd be kind of fun to go over my list of my kind of 10, some 10 of the favorite things that I love in the shop. Kind of quick, uh, kind of um, cheap things, so not super expensive, but all things that you could pick up last minute for great gifts for makers. So makers of all sorts of all different uh, types. Um, let me jump on here. There we go. <clears throat> all right. So turn this down, and I'll see who's here. All right, we got people jumping on now. So again, welcome uh, to the Art of Craftsmanship Pod, <laughs> the Art of Craftsmanship Workshop, and. Uh, yeah, like I said, I wanted to kind of walk through 10 fun gifts that I think would be good for most makers and a little bit of variety there. So uh, we're going to get started pretty quickly because I want this to kind of be a quick video. Even though it's a live, I do want it to be something that people can watch and so I don't need it to be super long. But once I get through the gifts, then we can chat a little bit more and I will chat with you guys if you're here in the chat room. All right. So first... Uh, first thing I want to talk about <clears throat> on the list is the Klein Tools Digital Angle Gauge or Digital Angle Finder. This is a great little uh, tool for anyone who's doing anything where angles matter. Now I use this a lot for knife making, so I'll set up my platen if I want to make sure I'm, you know, have the work rest and the platen at a certain angle. A lot of times I want to make sure it's at 90 if I'm doing, you know, spine or if I'm doing a profile of a knife or I'm profiling any piece of metal, I'll set it up so it's a nice, you know, even 90 degrees, but also I'll often set up to 45 degrees to be able to grind different things. A lot of my knife handles have facets or octagonal eyes, so I really like using that so I can set up my platen and my work rest at 45 degrees, and this is a great way to have that work, and it does a really good job. So it's magnetic, so you kind of, you turn it on, Set it down on your surface, it gives you a zero, or you hit it, you put it down, hit the button, it'll zero out, and then once it's zeroed, then you turn it, and as you turn it, it'll give you a different angle. Now, the cool thing about that is that you can set your zero at any angle. So if I want to um, have my angle start off at just like, it's, it's not perfectly parallel to the floor, it doesn't matter. I just set that zero, it sets it, and then I check it against the other object, and it'll give me that perfect angle. So it doesn't ma matter where it is, and it's magnet, so it will magnetize to any metal surface, which is awesome. So that's my first choice for kind of the first of the top 10 items that you could get last minute for a maker, kind of cool object, the Klein Tools Digital Angle Gauge. Now, you can also get these for um, from lots of different companies, but I really like the Klein, and I will put a link to that one specifically in the description below. <clears throat> All right, let's see who we got here. Oh, we got Tyro, nice. Um, good to see you, Dennis is here, Lee Wallace is here, hello, hello. All right, let's move on to number two, our second um, item. Oh, actually, so this, uh, I checked today, the Klein Tools Digital Angle Finder or Digital Angle Gauge came in at $29.97, so just under $30. It's a really good deal, this is great. I use it all the time. When I was coming up with this list, it was like I was trying to find things that I use all the time, which wasn't that very hard. I just kind of thought about being in my shop and what do I always grab? And this is one of the things I grab all the time. <clears throat> Second thing on my list of top 10 items is my digital calipers. Now these are super inexpensive digital calipers. Um, I found a similar pair and I can't remember which ones these are. These are probably just the Chinese made pair. Um, these, the similar ones came in at $19.98, so 20 bucks. You can usually find them, find them for right around $20. What's going on, guys? With Outdoors, good to see you. Bernard Ketzinger, good to see you from Germany. Uh, this is great. So these digital calipers are something I use all the time. Um, it gives you a really accurate measurement. So if you're trying to check for, uh, if you're doing like, you know, attaching handle scales and you're drilling out holes for pins. You could do that for knife making. If you're doing any type of, you know, dowels, 
in woodworking, you can check your dowels. You can also use this to scribe a parallel line on the edge of anything because both of these, uh, the top and bottom calipers are hardened steel, so they can scribe line, which is really nice. So you can scribe it on metal or on wood. Um, just, you know, it's once you start using these and you realize like this is a digital one, so I can shut the jaws, hit my zero, and then with the thumb screw here, works it back and forth and you can go down to, this goes down to the thousands. So really accurate. Um, and it comes with a couple extra batteries and this one came with this case, which I love. I think it came with like two extra batteries. So like last me forever, I think I changed it one time in probably the three years that I've had them. So, uh, so yeah, these are great. Um, they work both in millimeters and inch, just one button to switch between the two. And it also has an ability to, once you find your space, you kind of set it, you find your angle where you want it you know, measure it out, find it, and then you can screw the little tightening screw, screw at the top and then it won't move. So that way, if you're marking lines and things, once you set that, you can lock it and it's perfect. This is great too, because you can find the measurement, the outside measurement of something by measuring like this, but you can also find the inside measurement of something. So if I wanted to find the inside measurement of this handle, I could open that up and do the inside measurement by using the top of the calipers. So number two on my list of great tools for the maker, last minute, digital calipers. And you can get lots of different versions all the way up to hundreds of dollars, but these will usually run you about 20 bucks for digital calipers, they work great. <clears throat> all right, depth, height, measurements, yep, awesome, thank you. Dennis is putting in his two cents on these things, which is great because these are things that tons of makers use. So more than likely they might already have these, but if they don't, or if it's something that you're looking for, these are great things to have in the shop. I use them all the time. All right, let's see, here we go. Number three. Uh, number three is the Rapid Tongs. Um, and these specifically, unfortunately, were not from Ken's Custom Iron. They are tons of different types of Rapid Tongs you can find online. Uh, I think Ken's Custom Iron was the first company that did it. Um, but <clears throat> they basically send you the tongs flat cut, just laser cut or water jet cut out of steel, two pieces. They send you the rivets, and then they send you the directions on how to make them yourself. Um, this set, when I looked it up, a similar set, because this is like a Chinese set. Um, at the time, right now, when I looked today, they were $32.50. And again, I'll put links to all these. So I'll put the exact links that I found when looking up these different things. Um, but you can't, it comes with five tongs, so five sets of tongs to make. So you have like a, a square jaw tong, but for like a wide head, this I have set to, I think about like a, a half inch square bar. Um, you get flat, flat jaw tongs, same things. I have this, I think I have it set to about an eighth of an inch. So even when I'm holding it all the way tight, it doesn't come all the way together because it's designed to sit flat on eighth inch bar. It also comes with, this is a shorter, um, you know, square jaw tongs that, you know, wolf jaw tongs, I guess they're called, um, where you can hold on to things. I have this kind of small, so I can do small round bar as well as uh, some larger stuff. <clears throat> and then uh, the flat jaw tongs, I forget what these are called. Um, uh, but they're designed to hold a knife blade on end, you know, so they're bent and they have a cut out of the middle. So you get a really good job holding something on end, which is really nice. So you can grab something and hold it like this. So it actually keeps it from spinning left and right, but also keeps it up and down because you have the slot. So maybe slot jaw tongs. I think that's what they're called. And then lastly, the five, you get pickup tongs. So these are just little, um, they're good for, or like scrolling tongs. You can grab the end of metal and you can scroll things over with it so you can bend them. Or they're just like nice long things to pick up something, especially when you drop when you're drop forging things on your uh, on your shop floor. So pickup tongs, these are great. Um, but this set, again, for 32 bucks, you could pick up a set that's really inexpensive. They're great tongs, they do an awesome job, and you get to make them yourself, which is a huge part of blacksmithing. You get to understand how the jaws, jaws are made, how the tongs are made, um, how to you know adjust the, the um, <clears throat> the boss and how to get everything to fit up well and also how to set rivets. So it's a great learning experience. And then you come away with five pairs of tongs. It's awesome. So for any, any, you know, blacksmith or knife maker or bladesmith experienced or new ones, these are a great set of tongs. Still sitting in a bucket on me for about two years. Yeah, it did take me a little while. Then I said he hasn't made his in a while. 
there are lots of tongs out there that you can buy that are already pre-made and there are a lot of great makers out there that make tongs. A lot of people think that it's just not worth your time to make your own tongs when you can just buy them already made and use your time to make something else. But these were really fun to make and it took me maybe three or four hours. Sat down and did all of them. So they're awesome. I really like them. <clears throat> Recyclable Homestead. Hello, hello. How's it going? Oh, who else we got here? GAO Gamers. How's it going? Good to see you here. Thanks for popping in. All right, number four. <clears throat> number four is actually a twofer. So it's two for one. Two different magnets, and I, I put them together because they're really similar, um, although they do completely different things. So this is the just a little... 20 pound, holds 20 pound um, magnet, <clears throat> has a like plastic, a rubberized plastic molded handle onto it and just flat. It's about two and a half inches, two inches uh, tall and let's say three quarters of an inch wide. This is really good for holding on to steel when you're grinding flats. <clears throat> so I'll hold on to a piece of steel or a knife hanging onto the flat, and then I can push that against my flat platen, and I don't have to try to hold onto this like fine piece of steel if I'm grinding my flat. So having a magnet like this, a lot of people will use um, like welding magnets. Those work really well as fine as well, but I like this. I like the little handle on it. It gives me a really good purchase. I can also push on the top and bottom to like adjust my pressure, which you do a lot when you're, uh, when you're grinding knives and you're grinding flats to make sure you're grinding flat. So I really, I really like doing that. Indiana Doug, what's going on? Bold Woodsman, how's it going? Consider doing a video on about basics of metal hardening and tempering. It sounds like a nightmare for a newbie. Uh, I absolutely could. I've done a lot of stuff with um, hardening and tempering on some of my knife making videos. But actually, if you want to see a really good video that's all about the basics, it's a perfect video. It's short and sweet and to the point. Check out Crafting a Life I Want. Sean Porter from Crafting a Life I Want. He just posted a video Maybe just yesterday, about simple and easy um, knife hardening and tempering in a forge. So if you don't have a kiln, you don't have something, you know, a, a, a heat kiln where you can actually set your temperatures, you can heat treat from a forge, and a lot of great knife makers do. It's not as specific as if, you know, the science and the numbers and the temperature as if you have a kiln where you can really control that. But for the beginner and for someone who understands the way that process works, um, it's a, definitely something good to do. And Sean does a great job of talking you through the process. So go over and check out his channel, Crafting the Life I Want. All right. <clears throat> Last Boy Scout, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, all right. So that's number one, right? That's the little 20-pound magnet. These I pick up from Harbor Freight for maybe five or six bucks. I couldn't find this on Harbor Freight online, so I found something similar. Um, and it came in this, the one that I found online came in at ten ninety nine. So for 11 bucks, you get this magnet. It's, I would pay $11 for it if I couldn't find the one at Harbor Freight for like five or six bucks. But, um, you know, it's definitely great. I have a couple of these. I actually keep them magnetized to my grinders. I just keep them right there because I'm always using them in there. So I pull them off and this is really nice to have. So a little four, you know, 20 pound, uh, hold magnet, rubber grip. That's great. I use it all the time in knife making. The other thing I use all the time, and I put this as the twofer for number four, is another magnet, is the telescoping magnet. I, I use this for heat treating. It's actually, <laughs> see, when you use it a lot, it ends up, I, with heat treating with magnets, you know, I'll check for critical temperature when, when, a, when steel for, you know, high carbon steel reaches critical temperature, which is when you can quench it. Um, it becomes non-magnetic, which is just a, you know, that's how you know that it has gone from uh, austenite to martensite and then you know, and back. You know, so when it becomes non-magnetic, you know that it's at the critical temperature, and that's when you can quench it and harden your steel. A telescoping magnet is a, a really great thing to have when you're doing that because I can reach in and I can touch. You know, I pull my steel out a little bit, touch it in and out of the forge, touch it to make sure that it's non-magnetic. If you are heat treating from a forge, this is a great thing to have. I keep it. It's got a magnet on the back as well. It's got that. So I just keep that next to my forge. Like I said, if my magnets are running out, I probably should get another one. Um, and telescoping magnet, I found this. This was online, I found for $12.99. Again, I think this one came in a set of like the kind of random things you get when you get like the extension thing where you can, the little pickup thing, you know, from for picking up things from behind your 
bench or whatever you kind of get the or like maybe a little magnet that has like the mirror or you know the extendable mirror on the end that funny little set well this came in that set and i use it all the time for uh, when i'm doing my heat treat and checking for non-magnetic so nice extendable one so i can reach in don't have to get my hand too close to the steel so there you go <clears throat> so number four was the magnet for holding your steel or holding something when i'm grinding in the grinder for knife making and then the extendable magnet for heat treating and testing for non-magnetic. All right, moving along, moving along. Let's see what we got. Got a bunch of people here hanging out. Good to see you guys. This will obviously go up on live on YouTube. Or not live, it'll be uh, up on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch back if you haven't been able to catch from the beginning for the live stream. But for those of you who are watching, good to see you here. All right, next thing um, on my list is the six-in-one screwdriver. Um, I feel like I got like a metal splinter in my finger. Let me get out with a magnet. That might actually work. Nope, still there. <laughs> okay, um, so this is a six in one screwdriver. This is a great um, all in one screwdriver. It works really well um, for the multi purpose thing that it is. So this is really nice because you have multiple size tips of a Phillips head and a flat head. So I have two, this is a large flat head and then I flip it around as a large Phillips head. Sit together really nicely. There's a nice detent that holds it in there and it sits into um, a hex drive. So you can use this as well. I forget the size of that, but you know that you can use as well. It's a really standard hex head for a bolt. So you have your double-sided screwdriver. This is the large size of the screwdriver of the Phillips and the flat. If you pull the whole thing out, flip it around, then now we have two more and we have the small. So this gives me a nice small Phillips head, a nice small flat head, and then a smaller hex head. So it gives you two sizes of hex driver heads and then small and large Phillips and flat for both sides. So this is a great tool. I really like this one. Um, this is from Buck Brothers. Uh, I have used other ones and I really like the orange handle one. The one that I found online is from Great Neck and right now you can pick it up for $9.88. For, so for just under $10, you get six tools in one. This is really nice. I actually keep this in my tool belt for any time I'm doing any type of construction work or working outside where I need to have that belt on me. This is always with me because you can't beat having four screwdrivers and two driver heads in one tool. So there you go, the six in one screwdriver. <clears throat> That's number five on my list. All right, number six on the list. Let's see what we got. All right. Uh, number six is double cut carbide rotary burr tool set. Now these are awesome. Uh, these are rotary burrs. So these go on the end of a Dremel. Um, lots of different sizes. Uh, you can see here. These are all carbide, so they're designed to cut metal. They can cut anything because they are harder than most hardened steels, but these are double cut, so they have kind of a really nice pattern back and forth. They work really well um, and give you a ton of cutting power. I use them constantly. I actually have one in my Dremel tool over here, which is always plugged in at the end of my bench right here. <clears throat> and I was just using it last night to work the inside of a hammer eye that I was, uh, that I was fitting to a head and it had some burrs inside. These are awesome. I've used them to carve wood. I've used them to carve metal. Um, they're indispensable and they're super cheap. So again, for any type of carving, any type of like fine work that you're doing that you need to remove material that you would use a file for or use like a little rasp for if you're using wood, these work really well. And you can pick these up. This set I saw <clears throat> was for $13.99. So for $14 comes with 10 burr, um, and it's all different sizes and shapes to be able to do different types of cutting. Um, and again, these are almost indispensable in my shop. I use them nearly every time I come down here. And so much so that they just live here on my bench. There are some tools that live on my bench 100% of the time, and these are one of those tools. <clears throat> yeah. Obviously, uh, Dennis Tyrell and I are very similar in what we have in our shop. So he's got the same thing too. Awesome. All right, moving on, number seven. Number seven is <clears throat> 2P10 Super Glue or Cyano, Cyanoacrylate. Um, I use, I, <clears throat> this is the professional wood 
formula specifically. I really like the 2P10. I've used other ones and I've been really happy with this one. I haven't used a ton of other ones, but I used a few other ones and I really like this one. This is the thick. Um, one thing I'd like to have is like the real thin with the um, with the applicator, the real like long applicator, so you can do tiny little ones. But I like the thick because it actually doesn't run very well. So if I'm doing, I usually use this for like woodworking or fixing things. I use it all the time, and this uh, works great. And with the thick formula, it, it make, it's like a nice gel, so it stays in place. Um, and that comes with, and I have it here, keep them right here in my drawer underneath my table, the 2P10 activator. This is the best stuff I've found so far. I really like the 2P10. And for this set for the, this is like a 2.25 ounce bottle and the activator bottle, um, the spray activator, it run, will run you <clears throat> right about $21. $21.19 is what I found. And again, I'll put that link to that in the description below so you can use that. Um, but 2P10, I use it all the time. Before I started using super glue, I use all sorts of different things. Um, and th I've found that just super glue is such a versatile thing to have in the, the shop or cyanoacrylate, right? It's the same thing. It's the type of chemical that's used there. Super quick to dry, really strong bond, and really hard, you know, compared to some other uh, two-part epoxies and rubber cement. Those things are flexible. So if you want a really hard, inflexible glue, work really well. <clears throat> and I haven't really found a big problem with it. I almost want to be like it's too it, it dries too fast and it's 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 like less dependable or predictable but i haven't found that i've they've made lots of things with this wood and metal and gluing handle scales and lots of different things occasionally and it's just it's a great product so, so 2p10 cyanoacrylate and the activator together uh 21 dollars and 19 cents <clears throat> hey from brazil thanks for your videos namir elias Puss. Skill. Great to see you. Awesome. Um, does it come in colors? Uh, this one specifically I do not have in colors. Um, I haven't seen 2P10 in colors. I think it's just the clear. Um, so that is one thing that if you're doing glue and you want to have something like a filled in color, this is clear. So no, it does not come in colors as far as I can tell, at least from this brand. Um, Dennis Tyrell says you use uh, brown and black a lot. And uh, I haven't really, I haven't used colors in the past. Sometimes when I am uh, gluing up a handle or gluing up something where I'm using two-part epoxy, I'll mix them some pigment with pigment with that and mix it with the glue. But I haven't really, I guess maybe it's the way I use this. I don't use it all that often um, in applications where color is important. Actually, it's more important usually that it's clear for me because it's usually woodworking um, where I use this the most. Or like fixing a shoe or, it, or I don't know, fixing a pair of sunglasses. I fixed sunglasses for Devin that broke. And, you know, so those type of things, I just want that glue to be clear so it doesn't show up. So, uh, Also, I fixed, uh, like, porcelain plates and bowls and things. It's it's a great product. All right. Um, number, where are we? Number seven. Nope. Yeah, number seven. Number, sorry, that was number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number eight <clears throat> is, these are out of order, is the... Suzanne pool saw, Japanese pool saw, um, uh, Ryoba double-edged pool saw. And I absolutely love this one. My mother-in-law got me this for Christmas last year. Um, I have similar ones from Harbor Freight, which I have a couple of them here. <clears throat> and even these, uh, the lower quality ones, which I think are like $12, even these are great. When I found the pool saw, I really um, fell in love with them and this one from Suzanne in Japan is a dream to use. Stays really sharp, cuts a super thin kerf. If you're cutting anything, you need it to be thin. It's also a flush cut, so you can kind of work across a flat surface and cut, and it doesn't mar the edge of your wood or mar the surface of your wood. So the Suzanne um, Ryoba pool saw um, from the Suzanne company made in Japan. These are really beautiful and work like a dream. Um, this one will run you, what I found today was $40 and 80 cents. So, <laughs> so for 40 bucks, you could pay 13 or $14, or tw like 13 bucks for this, um, which is pretty good, but it's not going to be as sharp. It's not going to last as long. Pay $40 for this. So a little bit less than twice as much. 
and you get a product that is, uh, uh, as maybe as uh, Wrangler Star would say, this one gives me the fizz. <laughs> Just something that's really fun to use. I really enjoy it, and it's really sharp and really cuts really cleanly. So the Suzanne Ryoba pool saw, Japanese pool saw, is a beautiful product. All right, let's see, let's see, where are we? Uh, number nine. Number nine is probably the thing that I use on this list more than absolutely everything. And still trying to get that, get that metal shard over my finger. One of these times I'll get it. I can see it right there. Um, <clears throat> is my mechanical pencil. Now this is the PaperMate Advanced mechanical pencil. Um, I absolutely love this pencil. Uh, the body of it is steel. So it will not, it won't break as easy. I keep it in my pocket all the time. It's some, it's on my EDC. I always have it there next to my Leatherman. Sometimes I have a pen there. Sometimes I'll have something else. But this pencil is absolutely always there. And in past, in the past, I've used other mechanical pencils, and uh, and they're usually plastic bodies, so they snap and break. Um, and I've used other metal ones as well. I really like this one. It has a nice kind of grooved surface. This is the black one. Um, it's kind of, they kind of wear away a little bit over time, the color does, but this is just a really cool object, um, really beautiful. And this one specifically is the 0.7 millimeter, number two. Um, so push the end, you get a really nice, uh, you know, tip that comes out and actually has kind of a hideaway metal tip. So once you push it and put it back in, you have this little teeny metal tip that slides back in so it protects it so it doesn't bend or break when it's not in use. And then when you click on it and it comes out, you get this extension that comes out a little bit further and the tip of your lead comes out nicely. So let's see if you guys can see that. Let's see. There we go. So there you can kind of see once I push this in, that tip goes away. And then if I start clicking it again, the tip comes out a couple couple presses and you have this really nice lead. I obviously, not obviously, I definitely prefer the 7.7 .7 over 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is just too thin for me and this is just a really nice surface. Nice thick piece of lead, just keeps it sharp all the time but also I can, you know, mark with it. It doesn't go dull and it's not so fine that it doesn't break all the time. So, paper made advanced, mechanical pencil with a metal barrel. Um, I haven't been able to find tool stop. Hello, hello. All right, Dennis, happy holidays. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, <clears throat> I haven't been able to find online this specific pencil in a, in a one pack, so just one. Now I've been able to find online, so I bought this one actually on my way to Maker Camp uh, this year, heading up to East Durham, New York. We stopped at a Walmart on the way close by there to pick up some like snacks and things before we got there. And I found this one, a single pack, one black pencil with a packet of 0 .0, 0 0.7 lead with it. Um, and it was like seven bucks or something. So um, I bought one because I absolutely love them. And my last one had uh, the, I, lo I, mess I, I lost the end, the metal end. Um, that being said, uh, you can buy the two pack of these right now. Um, I found on Amazon uh, a two pack and it comes with a black or a gunmetal gray and a rose gold. Um, that two pack of 0.7 millimeter is $8.49. So absolutely worth it. I would 100% pay, you know, $10, $12, $15 just for this one pencil. It stays in my pocket all the time. It's used more than anything else on this table and I absolutely love it. So. If you're a mechanical pencil person, even if you're not, this is the one you want to get. All right, and that brings us to number 10. Last one on the list um, is the sewing machine light. This is just a standard sewing machine light. You can find, they sell lots of them. It has a uh, adjustable neck. It's a magnet base, so you can stick it to anything. Adjust the neck, turn it on and you can put light exactly where you want it. And that is a huge, huge thing for any shop. As you can see, I've got lights all around here. I have clip lamps all over the place. I actually thought about making, um, just doing like a clip lamp as one of my gift ideas. But these are awesome. Um, when I originally went to find and buy one of these, I saw one that was like $15.99 online for one. And then I saw right next to it, you could buy two for like $14.99, a two pack. So I looked that up. 
Um, as of right now, the two packs of these specifically are $16.99. So for $17, you can get two gooseneck, what they call sewing machine lights. They got 30 LEDs, super bright. Um, and you can put it right next to something, turn your light on. This one actually lives on my grinder, one of my two by 72 grinders. Um, my other one, JP Woodwork, what's going on? Uh, both grinders have these magnetized to them all the time. Um, I have one on my bench vise right here, you can see. I have one over on my bandsaw. Um, I think that's all, I think I have four of them right now. I, because I bought one, I was like, I'm just gonna buy two, because I was gonna buy two anyway. And I was able to get four for the price of two, so I bought four. Two two-packs. So that's the last one. So for $16.99, uh, you can get a two-pack of the sewing machine light with adjustable, uh, adjustable neck magnetized. You can put it wherever you want it and have light on what you're making. Absolutely indispensable. So there you go, guys. That is my uh, kind of, I wouldn't say top 10, but that's 10 cool gift ideas for the maker. Last minute, if you're still looking for something to buy for somebody, all of these would be really cool, depending on what your maker makes. Um, you know, they're just, it's a variety of things. And these are things that I use all the time in my shop um, and would definitely recommend. So there you go. Um, before I go, I figured I would answer some questions or if anybody has any, has any specific questions you can ask or if, uh, if you want to see anything else in the shop, I can show you that. One of the things, I have a bunch of other things I love, like obviously like a Stanley 25 foot tape measure or something that's indispensable and you can never have enough of. Um, safety glasses, um, I use um, uh, also like, these are my Isotunes, this is the Safe Max, and I use these for hearing protection in the shop. I really, really like these because you can put them around your neck and just let them hang. These are awesome. I think these are running about somewhere in like the $80 range. Um, I really like them. Um, Ballastol is a great uh, rust preventer. I love Ballastol, I got that. I just have tons of stuff. Oh, here's another great tool. Things everywhere, these are things I use all the time. Shinto rasp, if you do any type of woodworking or uh, wood shaping, a Shinto rasp is awesome. It's actually like two, um, it's, it's like a, um, a hacksaw blade or like a bunch of hacksaw blades and they have a fine side and a rough side. Shinto rasp is indispensable. What else was I thinking of? A couple other things. Um, one thing I thought of was, I thought about doing just like a, a speed square because that's something I use all the time. This is a big version. I keep a big version here and then I keep a small version in my in my belt, in my tool belt. But, you know, speed square for doing 45s and actually doing all your angles you can do. If you know how to use this, it works really well. You kind of put a put this on your thing and turn it and you can figure out angles. You can cut 45s and you can cut all the different angles that are on your speed square. These are indispensable in the shop. I love it. Use it all the time. Regular metal rulers. Metal rulers are things I use all the time. And I go through them all the time. So lots of fun stuff. Um, that I use in the shop on a regular basis. Um, but if you're looking for a fun, cool idea for kind of a last minute gift, maybe check out one of these 10 things. And like I said, all of the links to all of these will be in the description of the video as soon as I'm done going live. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. I want to do just a quick live and bring you along, give you some uh, content for this week. Um, we will have another video coming out next week on our uh, sheep shear knives that we're working on. I know we've talked about that on the podcast. If you haven't uh, come over and listened to us on the podcast, you can check us out there, um, the Art of Craftsmanship podcast. You can also go over and support us on Patreon. Um, we just started a Discord channel. It's been fun chatting with everyone over on Patreon on our Discord channel over the last two days, <coughs> showing them some behind-the-scenes stuff of what we've been working on. Um, and then also head over to Instagram and follow us there. You can follow me. Um, I, I run the Art of Craftsmanship at the Art of Craftsmanship on Instagram, and then Devin runs at the Art of Camera Guy. So if you want, follow him, and you can see what he's doing, and you can kind of see behind the scenes stuff as well. So, all right, guys, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much. Let me know what you think about these things. If you have other cool suggestions, put them in the comments below, and maybe I'll do another uh, another gift suggestion thing before the holidays, maybe even a even more last-minute video. All right, everybody, thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next video.